Hello, welcome everybody to Dashcam Diary of a Disabled with me, Chronically Happy. And Stormy Dog's in the back laying down. I am now just leaving my chiropractor appointment for today. And I am headed to the park with Stormy to go play so we can get her wiggles out. And go to the best bathroom for her. Um, so something just came to light. <laughs> And I just, I really got to talk about it. And I don't really have anybody to really gossip with or to. So, I'm not going to say names. Um, I'm going to use uh, fake names for the situation. I don't want to call this person out. Just in case, by chance, they do watch this. But I don't think they watch any of these. So, I think I'm safe. Anyways, so, here's the context of the scenario. It took me a minute to think about whether I should say anything or not on a video and post it, but I think this is an important lesson to get out <sighs> about accountability, honesty, and friendships. Um, and being appreciative of complete honesty, but also understand and realize when somebody I don't want to use the word manipulate, um, but I feel like it's a little bit of a white lie. I feel like it's an excuse, but anyway, we'll get back to that <laughs> when I go after that, I tell my story. So, what's going on is, and I just bought the ticket, and I just got everything all set up. And so this is also a re repeat offender friend. I haven't put too much faith in it. And I haven't put too much into the friendship. You know, I put as much out as much as I receive. Well, I try to anyway. I feel like there is a power dynamic in our friendship. When there really shouldn't be. But I understand and realize that there is one. Especially now. I don't know if I'm the reason that some of their, I, don't, I really don't want to assume, but I feel like there's some kind of marital issues between my friend and her husband. We are usually, so usually when, I don't even know how to tell this story. <laughs> I don't want to give out too much information. So I have to think about this. Maybe I should have scripted this a little bit, but I hate scripting my, my videos. I like to be raw, transparent, honest, hardly any editing. The only editing I do is pausing and restarting the video. That's as much editing editing that I ever do these Josh Cam Diaries. I do not edit any of this, which I'm still, if anybody wants to be my editor, I have nothing to pay you in. Uh, I can pay you in some bracelets or I, I don't know. Pay you back in kindness. <laughs> um, but anyways, so side note, if anybody wants to be my editor or wants to try and learn how to edit and make YouTube videos from me with me, um, I would really love that. I really would love that and appreciate that in somebody. And once I get to the point where I can monetize and if I do end up monetizing, I don't think it's going to happen this year. But you know what? For being in my first year in my YouTube channel, I know I'm sidetracking. I'm also trying to think about how to word my, my story as I speak about something else. Multitasking in my head with ADHD. <laughs> and I'm so wound up today. I got into talkative mood with uh, another patient at my chiropractor's office. Like, I stayed here an extra hour after my appointment just talking with one of my other favorite patients that I, I don't even know his name. I think I know his name. We'll call him Bob though, even though that's not what I think his name is. Patient con con confidentiality right here. I'm not trying to mess up any HIPAA stuff. Um, so I'm glad I got to talk to Bob. I'm really glad that I learned more about him. He really wanted to get into forestry and he wanted to, uh, 
love meeting new people or meet or talking to people. I love I love socializing, darn it, and I love old people. And this guy's older than me. Um, but dang, I appreciate the, the conversation so much today. I have so much to think about and take in from our conversation. He wants to see me be a better person and not be late. <laughs> He told, I told, I kept trying to count, give him excuses, and I'm like, yeah, I need to stop giving excuses. He took some uh, psychiatry classes, so I know he was analyzing everything I was saying about body movements and everything. <laughs> so, uh, anyways, it was a nice conversation. <laughs> I need another water for this. I'll throw my back. The judge went back in place. Alright. Anyway, so here's my story. After six minutes of uh, rambling and bypassing what I originally wanted to talk about. Because I'm still taking in and processing what me and I do talk about. So I'm really happy. And I just need to get this other bit off my chest. Like I said, I've got nobody else that I can really talk to and gossip about this stuff with. And I already kind of, I mentioned it to my mom. And, you know, I hate that my mom's biased against some of my friends because I leak some of this information. So, she forms her opinion on my friends based off of what I say about them. And, uh, she hasn't really met any of these people. So, it's not really anybody that she knows. about why I'm making this video. So, next weekend, I have a lot of so's today. I'm so wound up. I'm so thinking about it. So is one of my thinking ones, I guess. Instead of like, 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 people say like in a lot of speeches or conversation. That's what that valley girl thing stereotype came from. Like, let's go to the mall. <laughs> I'm still buying it. I'm still procrastinating on this story. Um, it's hard. I'm still trying to process it. And I really need to get in. I need to get to my real feelings about the situation. My situation is next weekend I'm going to go see a DJ up in Portland. And it's a good... So where my friends live that I hang out with and got me back into the electronic dance music genre is honestly thanks to them that I got back into the electronic dance music EDM music genre which ultimately led me to making beats but not because of them they don't do the whole this thing they don't my friend my friend we'll call her Susan so far from away from her real name <laughs> Susan and her husband, we'll call them Jeff. Susan and Jeff are my couple friends. I met her in a raw counting group on Facebook. I invited her to float the river with me as a first time hanging out. I mean, in real life, floating the river in a tube. So you park, you have to have two vehicles at least. One at the beginning and one at the end. So you have you can't ever really float by yourself. You can you kinda gotta have somebody else have a second vehicle. So you need at least two driving people to go float a river. And that's one of my favorite pastime pastimes to do in the summertime here in Oregon. And there's a river that's really not too far away, off the Interstate 5, uh, which is the longest highway that goes north and south between Washington, Oregon, and California. So here's some extra knowledge. Interstate 5 is a major interstate which carries a lot of drugs up and down the entire coast. So I believe back in the day when I was a teenager, our crappy marijuana MJ uh, used to come from Mexico and bricks and they would have to compress it and there were so many dang seeds in it and stems, seeds and stems, like, it was definitely, you know, I'm not proud of myself, I had to smoke that stuff back in the day, every once in a while, some good stuff would come through that us teenagers and my group of friends would figure out and find, and let's just say there's a whole bunch of 
much people that were uh, slinging it back in the day, <laughs> including myself. She's not a clingy friend, and she certainly is not. And um, we actually did have a thing at one point in our friendship where she unfriended me from Facebook because I let her down because I told her son that I wanted to take them to the beach the following week. A lot of things came up, and I just couldn't do it. Uh, and I never called. I kind of ghosted them. And her son really got upset that he got told that it wasn't happening. And so I gave her son false hopes. In her eyes, it was a major lie and a letdown. So that is one of the reasons why I believe that Susan just does not. Um, that's why she'll never be attached to a friend. That's why she doesn't really have any other friends. And this is why she doesn't keep friends is because I don't know if her expectations are just too high. I don't know if it's just a fear of abandonment. I do not know exactly what it is, but she's very distant and she's very hard to get to talk on a one-on-one -on -one basis about certain topics because her son is always around when we are busy and talking. And I have to kind of be careful about what I talk about in front of her son. I don't, I'll do respect, and of course, I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna be rude about that. I'm not ever gonna intentionally do anything to harm her or her son or her husband. But on many occasions, I have stayed the night at their house. I have watched their dog. I've half sat for them. I've, I've uh, babysat for them. So this is the extent of our friendship. The only time I really hear from her is if she needs me to watch something for her either kid house dog I have done all of the above so she trusts me enough to be able to be in her home uh, so she she likes me enough for that so I'm very you know I'm I'm grateful for our friendship but understanding the extent of what our friendship is is I'm a trustworthy enough person to do these things for her are very important to her, but yet she does not let me in in other aspects of her life where we can actually do other things outside of the house other than me coming over and partying with her and her husband. So this is where we've gotten really close, where we've gotten more conversation, but our minds are altered. It's a, uh, it's a type of 
conversation. So, like, I really enjoy that. So, they do involve me in their life, but I feel like she's involving me less in recent months. And, it's, you know, I'm, she usually checks in with me a lot more frequently, but she's been doing it a lot less to me. And I don't know specifically what it is, but I've always felt like there's something that she just doesn't tell me that there's something that she's biased against.
we're very similar in our political views, but I don't vote. Don't don't yell at me for not voting. I have many reasons why. I'm not going to get into that right now. It's not part of the story. Um, so I went to Eugene last weekend to go see a DJ called Tape B. I really enjoyed his set at EDC. So I found a, met, a ticket last minute, bought it, and I went down to Eugene. Enjoyed the hell out of the show. I had such a great time. Loved it. Loved my experience down in Eugene. Well, I bought another ticket for another DJ thing. It's called Haunted Forest up in Portland, Oregon. Haunted Forest is a two-day event, and it has like seven DJs that are playing each night. We're going the first night only because this DJ she found, his name is Dr. Fresh. Um, I'm really hyped about this. Uh, last time I hung out with them, we listened to this DJ Fresh, and I enjoyed his... Uh, mix. I enjoyed the set, so, uh, but she's raving over this DJ, so she, she's all about it, and, uh, she's been looking forward to this for so flippin' long, so long, and I didn't think there was gonna be anything that stopped her from going, but I know she has to plan everything to the T, and She's kind of like my mom. I think that's why I'm attracted to her as a friend and a friendship because she reminds me a lot of my mom and the way that my mom isn't as open-minded about things. And why my, my friend is, I consider her kind of conservative um, in like kind of a political sense, but like also she's conservative in so many other different ways. That's where I feel like I said the word defensive, but it's not really that. It's, the, it's just that she's very set in her viewpoints, like my mom is. There's no change in my mom's mind, just like me. I'm very stubborn like my mom, and that's how Susan and I are very similar. We're very similar when we know what we want, and we're not afraid to freaking say it. Um, we're, we're very truthful, honest people, even if the truth hurts. She has hurt my feelings a couple times, and I've gotten very defensive and triggered from it. However, um, I've, I've, I've never been so hurt that it's ever going to, like, be the end-all, be-all of our friendship. Uh, I, you know, I don't know what it's going to take for us to not be friends, but I, it had to be a really big deal for, for me. But there's been nothing so far in our five years that's given me total red flag and be like, yeah, this friendship is not a healthy boundary or relationship for me. You know, I have to do what's best for me, and... I only want those people in my life that are going to look me up and not bring me down. And she's not one of those people that will bring me down unless I ask a specific question and she answers it. And I'm one of those people, if you don't want to know the answer, don't ask the question. Seriously. If you don't want to know, don't ask it. Um, but I was really curious on why. So, I'm going to backtrack just a tad. She's all about this DJ. She's so excited. Like, she, you know, nonstop. She got the tickets way before me. They were for her. Susan and Jeff were for sure going to go. She had it all laid out, kind of how she wanted to go about going. And so... I'm just so dumbfounded like the, the plot thickens it really thickens like I just got the information right before I turned on this video camera I'm still processing it all it's just it's beyond I just don't oh my gosh I don't understand why I, I mean I do but I don't and if this is bothering me guys this is really bothering me because, so first off, when I told her I, I was thinking about going, she was like, oh really? Okay. And um, because she was kind of asking about it a little bit towards the beginning of this month and I didn't have the money. So I had to wait until I got my social security paycheck to buy the ticket for this. So that was the beginning of this week. I got it on Monday. So Tuesday is the day I actually bought my ticket. 
but I, I was so busy on Monday, I, I couldn't, you know, I couldn't focus on doing that that day. Um, Storm, you need to calm down. We're going to get up in a minute. She always gets really whiny and impatient. So, I gotta finish this story, baby. Um, and I gotta use the restroom. <laughs> We're at the park about to play. Frisbee. I gotta get my other boots on, too. Might as well do that while I talk. So, to bring you up to the whole plot point of this entire story, after I told her I got my ticket, she, uh, I, I told her I was driving, you know, I didn't plan to ride with them, you know, you know, I, you know, nothing like that. Um, you know, I know she always has things under control and she always has everything planned out and how she wants to go about it. Just like me, you know, I, but I'm a little more flexible, honestly, I really am. <laughs> I don't give an F, honestly, most of the time, you know, but, you know, due to our time frames, you know, we, we met up, I mean, the last time we hung out was the night we went, did, I did that overnight, uh, camping DJ set thing, Let the Dora or whatever, last month, um, it was the last time I hung out with them, and, <laughs> yeah, she wanted me to do the same thing with them, but, you know, it makes me, you know, this is what, this, okay, this is what really bothers me. It does, it does stem from last month. It does stem from last month. Um. <sighs> oh, I just, I brain fog again. I'm not trying to process it. I, my body is, my fight or flight, you know, I'm triggered by this. I really am triggered. I didn't, you know, I'm not trying to, I'm trying to understand my trigger about this but uh what really bothers me is this is what's really bothering me so when I told them they were asked my, she Susan was asking specifics about my pain patch this thing right here this is the only thing that's been helping me and there's a lot of stigma about being dependent on pain medication. This is, this is the whole thing. Yeah, this is where it really stems from. So, they wanted to know what it was. I told them the name of it. We all sat down together. On, we were all on the couches. And, uh... No, 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 no. Stormy, no. <laughs> Stop it. Um, they know how heavy of a medication this is. Um, but I'm very coherent. It doesn't make you high. It doesn't make you high. It's not like a regular opioid. It's not like fentanyl. It's not like any of that. But they found a website that said it was like stronger than fentanyl. So this is where their bias comes from. Neither one of them approve of me being on this patch number one so they are not supportive of me being on this medication they don't like it um once they learned what it was once they looked it up they found the information so this is what bothers me last month when we went to that overnight dj i can't even really call it a festival like maybe uh dj camp out Overnight rave, I don't know. Pick You pick your definition. Um, she offered me, in her messed up state, that same drug that she knows interacts with this. And the, they, for one, they don't approve me being on this patch. So why would she intentionally ask me? to do that with them knowing how dangerous this is granted she was under the influence when she offered it to me but the fact that she offered it to me really bothers me that is what has been bothering me for so long 
That's what, that's why, this is, th these are the feelings I've been not wanting to process about our friendship. I haven't wanted to process these feelings of hurt by, why would she potentially want to off me? I feel like, I feel like she, like deep down, she does not care about me like she thinks she does. If she really cared, she would not, even in her messed up state, she would not have offered me to do that with them. And honestly, you know, I feel just as guilty because I actually took it from her. But I didn't actually take it. I'm saving it for a rainy day. It's kind of crappy of me to do that, but the fact that she offered it to me knowing full well what could happen if I mix these two. It makes me feel like she really doesn't care. That's not a trend. And what's funny is ever since then, you know what? We haven't really talked. She hasn't reached out like she normally does. What's changed in her brain besides doing all the drugs? I just, it really bothers me that she asked me to potentially harm myself by mixing medication and drug like that. I could potentially end things for me permanently. The fact that she offered it to me, even under her messed up mind, and the fact that she thinks that I, you know, I don't know if she knows that I took it or not, because I did actually stay there and uh, I don't, I think they left right after I left, honestly. I don't think they uh, stayed too much longer after I left. I got like a two, three hour nap before I went home. So that's number one and why I'm upset. Number two is knowing that Knowing that she doesn't approve of me being on this, but then she offered me that, and then the fact that she's okay with her husband only getting two or three hours of sleep after doing that hardcore drug, allowing him to drive both of them home a very long distance, that kind of bothers me too. You shouldn't be driving after taking that, that drug. Especially that soon after taking like the last one. Like. So, I don't really approve of people driving on that drug. I just don't. It's too dangerous. I've had to do it, unfortunately. I raised my hand. I'm guilty of doing it before too. But if I can avoid it at all costs, I do. I, I, was, I wasn't in a situation that I could really avoid it so I should not have ever done it at that point in time when I drove before I drove I should never have done it knowing that I didn't have a place to stay longer to be able to like get more coherent to be able to drive better more aware so the fact that she's okay with her husband driving on that drug before it's before they really get a good night's rest because when I do it with them at their house I don't leave until like 14 hours later like I'll stay the night I'll wake up in the afternoon with them and I'll hang out all day at their house just I lump on their couch talking with them while the husband and wife take turns with the kid in the morning. One will nap, one will be up on the couch with their son when their son wakes up first thing in the morning. That's why I was like, they really have it kind of down for themselves for the timing of how they do things, but I don't approve of them driving on that. It really bothered me that he drove home that soon after taking just a quick nap 
It really bothers me. It really bothers me that he did that. And then it really bothers me that she is so biased that she doesn't ever want to be in a car with me because I've had several car accidents and I have a pain patch on. So we both don't approve of one thing or another. That's where our values and morals are. Even though I've done it, I know I'm, I'm in the wrong. I completely 100% say don't ever drive under the influence of anything. I really do try to avoid it at all costs. Don't drive on anything. I know my body. I know my limits. Just like, you know, I'm sure her husband knows his limits. But she's also a person that's very set in her ways and I feel like she's controlling. I don't know how much, like I said, I'm not in their marriage. I don't know how much Susan and Jeff really cohesively mesh. I, I, you know, the more I get to know them, and I think this is why she doesn't have any friends, she pushes them all away by self-sabotage, one thing or another. But I'm one of the only few that have kept through the cracks with her in a friendship, especially for this long. She has no other friends. She has uh, the moms in the mom group and the homeschooling group, so I mean, but those are more, you know, more business than they are really like friends. They just, you know, small talk and that's all. All that matters to her is basically her son in my mind, because I don't know if, how much she really cares about her husband if she's willing to risk both her and her husband's life. So, I mean. Me driving on this versus driving under the influence of a hardcore drug that affects people's minds and eyes and vision really bothers me. It really does bother me. It just, it makes me so mad knowing that they intentionally drive like that. <clears throat> but I've ridden in a car with him under the influence as well. So I was willing to put my life at risk at one point too. So. I don't recommend. I am also not condoning. That's the word. Ugh, that's the word I was looking for earlier. I do not condone doing drugs or a medication that affects your brain and vision to, to the point where you cannot drive. I don't get to the point where I'm like nodding off on this medication. You see how wound up I am when I talk on these dash cams. Do you guys ever see me nod off like I'm getting sleepy? No. You know you don't. Um, I have video proof of how I drive and how I look my face when I drive. I have video proof. I want to have a, I want to have an actual dash camera though, recording the cars in front of me. I, I, for my own safety and proof in court, if I ever have to prove anything, I want a dash cam. I've had too many car accidents, 15, many of them I was a passenger in. So to blame it on my driving is completely BS. I own fault to the ones that were my fault. At 16 years old, my judgment and time was bad. I was a new driver. That was my fault accident. Um, the other accident that there's nothing I could have done or I could have avoided that one. Yes, 100%. So take that into consideration. I was a new driver at 16. I was in a hurry, never a good idea to be in a hurry. I'm never in a hurry these days. I'm always late. I would rather be late than dead. All right. I don't know if I can say that. Uh, I would rather be late than unalived. That's just my opinion. I would rather be late than unalived. I'm never in a hurry to drive anywhere. That's why I don't have road rage, hardly at all. Um, I have anxiety over road rage. I have anxiety. <laughs> um, that determines if I'm upset or not or mad about other vehicles going too slow. It's anxiety only because of my PTSD with doctors and those are the only places I'm really driving all the time. 
And then the other times, I'm definitely never in a hurry to go shopping or anything else, so. Everything else I'm late to. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter to me. Um, so, this is the point of the whole story. Like, I'm really disturbed by the fact that those events happened last month. And then the correlation and the actions of her not reaching out as frequently since then. I don't know if she thinks I took it or not. Whether I was under the influence or not when I drove home that camp trip with them. We all drove separately, of course. Me and Susan, Susan and Jeff rode together, of course. And then I drove myself. But it bothers me so bad to no end being under the influence drivers. I don't condone DUIs or death or hurting yourself or others. Like, it's not something that I'm proud to admit, but I'm honest. I'm honest. I'm not going to lie. Who hasn't slipped up and made mistakes or done things that they shouldn't have done? It's, it's part of learning and it's part of growing as a person and learning from your experience to not do those things. And it doesn't take something bad happening for me to realize that these are dangerous things that shouldn't be happening. And I should not be putting myself in the situation of. So, but we all have lapses in judgment at times. So please don't judge me too harshly because of it. Thank goodness nothing has happened during those moments where those things have happened in my lapse of judgment where I should have not done those things. But I'm trying to talk my feelings out so I can process all of this information and move on with my day. So now let's fast forward to, again, the orig original reason I started this story was too much context, which is part of my ADHD, hyper-focus, talkative procrastinating on getting to the real point but looping back around to complete the whole story and a good presentation hopefully <laughs> um, I hope I've captured some of the, somebody's interest about listening to the whole thing I know most, most people don't though uh, it's your choice <laughs> um, so Susan is all about this DJ and Jeff it's all about pleasing Susan and keeping the boat into one. He's just, Jeff is so laid back like me. <laughs> like, I really like Jeff. Um, but I really like Susan, too, um, because we can have honest conversations. And that's what I truly value in a friendship is honesty. But... There is a, a caveat to that. Like, I know she's not being 100% honest behind the certain things that she asks of me. For instance, since she found out I got my ticket, we've been talking about costumes and coordinating. We are going to do um, Alice in Wonderland theme. Since I already have Cheshire Cat stuff, that's what I'm going as. Um, and... Jeff is going to go as the white rabbit and Susan is going as the red queen. She's already ordered her outfit and everything. They've got their tickets. Like I said, they got them before me at the beginning of the month as soon as they found out when he was playing here. She was all excited and um, <clears throat> she used to be a DJ herself. And so she's really into the music. Like, that's about all she's into, though. That and the hardcore drug. <clears throat> that is associated with that kind of music and genre. Which there's a couple that are, so I'm still leaving that out for y'all to decide what I'm talking about. But I'm sure y'all know. If you don't, do some research. Figure it out. If you want to know so bad. <clears throat> so... I haven't done it in a long time, for me anyway, besides when I was in the military, you know, I didn't do any of that then. Um, did other stuff, but not that. 
Um, <clears throat> um, so she told me, uh, I didn't mention them or I didn't ask them if they wanted to ride with me or not. I always know that she likes to be in control and drive herself, but she's the one that asked. So that conversation came to be that she asked if they decide to leave early, which is never the case. They never leave early to anything because they are always very attentive to their son. Their son is number one and, uh, and that's why it should be. I mean, honestly, their son should be number one, but they should seriously think about not endangering themselves with those activities I've already mentioned. Um, me, I'm single. I have less to lose, but I don't want to lose my, my life either. And I don't want to take anybody else's away from them. <clears throat> Losing my voice from the story here. <clears throat> I am quite upset though. Once she messaged me and asked, hey, if we leave early enough, and if you're leaving around the same time, maybe we could catch a ride with you. However, weird question. She started out with that. Here's a weird question. FYI. Um, we may take an Uber, but on the off chance that we want to ride with you, can Jeff drive your car for us? And I was like, huh. I prompted this weird question, but I didn't ask. I let it sink in. And I thought about it and thought about it. I didn't quite answer the question right away, but also she messaged me in the middle of me gaming, my gaming hour. So I didn't see the message right away. <clears throat> so when I did see it, uh, I still waited to respond, but she, um, I don't know what I said back. I, could, I haven't looked at the conversation for uh, you know, a few days. Um, and then it came out last night. It came out last night. She texted me during my gaming hour, of course. Um, <laughs> oh, let me fill in just a little bit more context. This is going to be an hour video, by the way. <clears throat> and I'm not doing any more talking because I'm losing my voice. I strained my voice too much and I'm out of alignment, I guess, still. I am, um, <clears throat> gosh darn it, I've got to have a sword to pull out. Pressing on something back there, making my voice more strained. Having to work harder to talk because it's out of alignment. Um, so anyways, huh. she asked me that question and I responded, I told her, let me think about it. I'm kind of weird about people driving my vehicle. Um, I, I said, I'll think about it though. I'll think about it. I'll let you know. Well, last night, uh, oh, so we did kind of conversate a little bit longer after that too, just for more context. Um, she, she was like, yeah, I am, I'm weird about that stuff too. And, you know, we kind of joked and laughed or LOL'd and laughing emojis, you know, about it, you know. Yeah, yeah, I'm weird about it too, you know, blah, blah, blah. And, uh, and then she goes to tell me, like, the next night, <laughs> filling in before last night's text and today's. Um, she said, uh, I think we're going to take an Uber. Never mind, we, we, we're not going to ride with you. And I'm like, all right, that's fine. Cool. And then, uh, so another day goes by and then she texts me. She's like, yeah, she's like, the Uber is going to be like $110. And I'm like, I said, yeah, that's probably not going to be cheap. <laughs> I did also defend myself. Uh, actually, I haven't got to that part of the story yet. Um, so we kind of laughed about it off and then she's like oh I'm going to take an we're going to do the Uber thing instead I'm like alright cool she's always backing out of things I swear to G or J 
I need a D or S. <laughs> I don't want to take the Lord's name in vain. Um, but I swear that uh, I was like, you're crazy for wanting to pay for an Uber. <laughs> uh, so that conversation came about. And then I was, and then, that, so that prompted me. So I finally asked, and this was before last night's text. So this was two nights ago. I finally asked her, so why would you be willing to pay that much money for an Uber over a friend driving you? I wasn't ready to hear it the first time she brought it up. So that's why I didn't. I would rather not say anything because I didn't really, I wasn't prepared for that question. So I, that's why I didn't know how to answer and that's why I told her I'll give it some thought. I'll think about it because I'm just weird about people driving my car. I really am, it's not an excuse. Like I just, I don't like people driving my vehicle. The FJ handles differently than other SUVs. It's really top heavy and the visibility is bad. If I'm going to get into an accident, I'd rather it be me driving than somebody else. I don't want somebody else driving my car and getting us into an accident. But they were, they're going to be sober when they drive it, so that was going to be fine. They aren't going to take it until they get there kind of thing. That's normally what happens. We don't you know, do things until we get to some place, some place safe. And before things get really heavy, we usually leave if we are out and about. There was one time we went downtown and took the thing and started feeling the effects of it and they're like, we gotta go home. <laughs> we just stay very long. So before things got really heavy, he drove us home, but it wasn't a very far drive. That's the one time that I mentioned that I rode with him when Jeff was under the influence. Um, but it was at the very beginning of it starting to take effect. But that's that's why you you know your body and you know how you respond to that. So you know if you're capable of being able to drive or not when you're on whatever substance you take. People generally have a good idea of how they can tolerate and how they respond to stimulus around them when you're under the influence of any kind of anything. I already know how I respond and how I am. So I'm very responsible 98% of, of the time. Like I said, there's very, there's, I've made lapses of judgment of getting in the vehicle when I shouldn't have, like I said. And I own up to it, 100% I own up to it. Um, but I don't condone it and I don't recommend it. Uh, and I don't want anybody else to do it if they don't have to. Always find somebody else to drive for you or pick you up or something. You know, I, I could have probably asked my mom to come pick me up. You know that, uh, she's done it many times. She's not gonna be happy but she'll do it if she needs to. And that's what a resource that I didn't use the time that I drove when I really shouldn't have drove. And I'm never gonna do that again. I will call her no matter what I'm on and have her come get me. I, I'm not gonna do it again. I, I promise you guys, I'm never gonna drive under the influence again of that stuff. Um, it was a very big learning experience and I'm like, I never wanna do this again. I, it was extremely difficult and I'm very lucky that nothing happened. Um, I still really regret it too, like seriously, like you can see the regret in my face. Like I just don't, I don't like people being under the influence and driving. I don't want anything bad to happen to anybody. So, I turn my car off, you might be able to hear me better with my softer voice, with my voice going out. Um, I don't condone it. I don't want to, uh, I just want to make that clear for the hundredth time. <laughs> don't drive when you're under any circumstances, under any influence of anything. Um, I don't feel any different than, I mean, I've had this patch on for six months straight and this is how I always am. No matter if I'm on or off a substance like opioids, because my body is dependent on it. And this is how my body is normally and functions like this without pain. Um, and believe me, if I was feeling sleepy or 
naughty, I wouldn't be driving. Like, not, like, not off naughty. Not naughty like bad, bad girl. <laughs> um, so, she finally told me why. It was the accidents and because I'm on this pain patch. And so, for her to tell me that she doesn't want to risk her and her husband's life because they have a son because I'm driving under the influence of my pain patch, which, does, which doesn't alter my vision or my brain, like the drug that they do all the time, with and without me, you know, they do that hardcore drug way more than I do. Um, it was an occasional thing and it was for my mental health because I wasn't getting mental health services, but I am getting mental health services now and I am getting pain relief and so there's no need for me to do that other than for entertainment or recreational purposes only now and I'm not trying to hurt myself by be mixing medication and that drug and enlivening myself because the risk is very high um, you know and that's the risk I'm willing to take in order to not be in pain and for them to be so judgmental about this pain patch, they know nothing about, and they know nothing about my pain. I mean, they know I'm in pain, but they, you can't fathom what somebody is going through on the inside unless you experience it yourself. And uh, so I've always told her at the beginning of the month when she started asking me if I was going to go, I always told her, I don't know. It depends on how bad I am. And I, after my fall on Friday, she really didn't think I was going to go, but then I bought my ticket. So then we started talking about costumes, um, because it's haunted forest, it's Halloween theme kind of, so we're dressing up for it. Um, coordinating outfits, coordinating how they're going to get there versus how I'm going to get there. And then also meeting up. And, uh, so Jeff told me in conversation one day at the very beginning of me and uh, Susan's relationship that, uh, he was glad because Susan almost backed out of meeting me. She just, she's anti-friend. She really is. She told me when we were painting the house, she doesn't really care to have friends. So that tells you something, you know. She doesn't feel like she wants to be responsible for anybody else. And she, I, I honest, that's what it is. I think she feels responsible for her friends. Because at the very beginning, I, I, I would get mad at her and I'd complain about her to my mom. Um, about like, I feel like she's like my mom, trying to be my mom, like being overprotective. Like she has that overprotective quality. She tries to show that she cares, but her actions and her questions say otherwise to me. They just do. Um, so I feel like she doesn't value her own life, uh, as much as she's telling me she does. If she's willing to get in the car with her husband under the influence of that, that alters his vision, alters his uh, consciousness, whereas this pain patch does not do that to me. But she wouldn't know because she's never been on it. Um, I know what they experience because I've been on the same hardcore drug as them. And I know how it affects me. And it makes it to the point where I can't really see straight. Um, and it's like the worst experience of your life trying to drive and focus when you have no control over your vision working the way it should. So for her to, and it's because I asked, it's not like she was throwing it in my face at all. It's because I asked and she told me it's because I'm on this pain patch and my accident record, which by the way, like I was trying to say earlier in my video, I have, they're not all my fault. Could some of them been avoided? I don't know what I could have done better to avoid some of them. I had to send my side swipe me as I was turning left at the same time they were. Like I was obeying all traffic things and it's because of other people's judgment. And then also I had a freaking, he basically pushed me off the road as he side swiped me. He side swiped me and he pushed me and my boyfriend off into a free, almost straight into a head on to a pole. But instead I stayed in my lane to let him sideswipe me by me going to head first into a freaking pole. So 
so I almost I avoided a freaking collision of my airbag going off but I didn't avoid the freaking collision with the semi I don't know what I could have done to avoid that whether I was on or off drugs like honestly all these situations where I've been in car accidents I've been rear-ended sitting at a stoplight by two vehicles I've been rear-ended by sitting at a stoplight I've been rear-ended in so many stoplights I've been rear-ended so many damn times how is that my fault that I'm rear-ended is it because I'm on a pain patch is it because I can't react how am I supposed to react <laughs> like how can I avoid that you can't and it's not because I'm on drugs that I've been in car accidents for goodness sake <laughs> I've never had an accident when I've been on under the influence I've never had an accident under the influence ever ever it's always been when I've been sober and how do you avoid something when it's just it was there's unavoidable it's, it's called an accident for a reason human error was it my error no so I could go over every single accident and the reason and how it happened but I'm not trying to justify my accident record to my good friend I did tell her out of my five rear end accidents I was a passenger in three of them so how is that my fault when I'm behind the wheel so just throwing that out there I'm not trying to make her ride with me I don't give an F but it's just the fact that her points are not even valid that gets me so peeved off and now so last night I'm getting to last night's text now so last night she tells me oh FYI Steve isn't the one that asked about driving your car it was me and he didn't know that I asked you so she was bringing up ride arrangements with her husband and she was telling him that they were going to take an uber and he was probably like why don't we just ride with Jenna and she probably told him why the same thing because of my accidents of being on a freaking pain patch and he got mad at her for it she told me that he was pissed off that he asked me or she was going to ask me she didn't say that she did ask me she said she was going to ask me for a ride and that started an argument between her and her husband 100% he got mad at her I'm very well proud of Jeff for standing his ground so now she put me in a position of now you have to lie to my husband and tell him that you don't know that she was supposedly going to ask me for a ride because she told him the reason why she didn't want to ride with him me she told him she didn't want to ride with me because of that and he got mad at her and so she said fine I won't ask her so so for all intents and purposes she holds this against me so much and it bothers her so much that I don't do the drug with them anymore so it got to because I hung out with them I did a house party with them between the camp I think it was, it was before the camp out it was right before the camp out I told them I was taking my anxiety pills for recreational purposes that night and I didn't do the same thing as them and so there was a situation that popped up that she felt a little bit uncomfortable or embarrassed about she apologized for it after that because I wasn't in the same kind of mindset as them and then it embarrassed her that I was more aware of conscious about what was going on in the house with them and then we didn't want to ride together to the camp out so she forced her husband to drive under the influence and ride home which he probably didn't appreciate <laughs> just I'm just guessing there 
because I know she 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 wouldn't drive. She's too responsible for that. So I think she uh, kind of holds out as leverage against him, potentially, potentially. Just guessing. And he had told me after we had hugged it out that one day that we learned about what kind of pain medication this was, and they were so concerned about it. They did not. They expressed their concern, and they said, "We don't want to see you go down this route." They were. They were treating me like a freaking drug addict. So not only does she think she's biased and thinks I'm a horrible drug addict now. That's probably why she doesn't want to hang out with me as much. Why she doesn't want to hang out with me other than doing those substances. And she got to the point where she tried to force it on me. Or she asked me to do it with them. Knowing full well all the consequences. So, how can I consider her a good friend now if she's not willing to care about my life? She's to the point where she's now, doesn't care about my life. Um, you know, she says, and also about a medication my immunologist is trying to put me on. It's a chemotherapy type drug, and I, you know... I like to be honest and share things with her, so I told her I was trying to start this new medication. She said, uh, I don't support you taking that, but she's like, I support your decision on what you make, but I don't support you taking that drug, but I support your decision whether you do or don't. <sighs> Which, you know, I like her honesty. I appreciate it. I'm glad that she told me. But it really shows her true colors. And I said, that's why I said, the truth will always reveal itself in action and words. But you have to be specific about how you word things and you have to be prepared for the answer that you don't want to hear. Because now this has changed the dynamic and it really shows me the power dynamic between Susan and I and what she thinks about me. She cares about me, but she's keeping me at arm's length. And uh, the more medication I get put on because I'm getting sick, and to the point where I, you know, I'm having a hard time managing doing events and doing fun things with them, like going to see DJs and stuff. Um, I don't know. I don't know what to do with this friendship, but it, it's really changed over the last month for me for, with them. Her, in particular. And it's because of those biases that, you know, if I wasn't who I was, and if I had asked that question earlier on in the week, it really, I was really triggered the beginning of the week. I had a lot of information to process. I had so many things happen this week. And I've coped without my anxiety meds. I don't get them until next week. And, uh, you know, I feel like I'm okay. <laughs> I just, I still need to process my feelings about this friendship because it's, it's really disheartening because she, her, Susan and Jeff, I think they deep down, they do care, but they care to an extent where they they are only assuming things because they just don't know what it's like to live in a body like this. And unless they have it too, um, they just don't know. And I'm glad, you know, I, I don't wish ill intent on anybody, but now she has what's uh, POTS and mast cell activation syndrome. Um, just like I've got, and it was activated by COVID. They, she got it. She has long haul COVID, which is POTS and mast cell activation syndrome. And, uh, and so she's had a hard time navigating her own health and her own weight and figuring out her own medical issues now. Um, uh, and that's why I've had to, you know, watch her kid multiple times because of multiple doctor appointments, but she never talks about her health with me. Not very often anyway. You know, not, not unless I ask specifically. 
but like she's not as open about sharing the information like I am because I'm willing to help other people and I want others to know what it's like and explain you know the the, the things that it affects in my life and it really affects friendships like being chronically ill and diseased earlier in life than normal my peers that are my age are all still working and in the deep throes of family life and here's me single in pain chronically diseased chronically in pain trying my best to navigate everything and navigate friendships relationships and then hopefully maybe someday a romantic relationship can be formed somewhere from somebody you know maybe i'll meet somebody someday um or be with my uh my twin flame but you know not all twin flames are meant to be romantic relationships they can be just friendships and that's fine um and ours is just a friendship more than anything now anymore I don't have any hope of a romantic relationship with him anymore. I I, I kept hope, hope up for like 20 plus years, but I kind of let go of that, you know. I feel like maybe someday we still will be together, but I, I can see us like old and wrinkled with gray hair, and that's probably, probably when we'll finally get together, if we ever do, if I don't find somebody by then. Um, and I'm open to really, you know, that happening. I'm open to it. I'm not going to hold out for him. I, you know, I learned a long time ago. I can't hold out for him. Uh, I need to live my life because he certainly has lived his and is still living his. Um, uh, so that brings me to today's text. Here's the conclusion to this long, hour long video. Hour and 15 minutes now, 16. Um, she just told me today she's not going. She didn't say. Jeff and her are not going. She says she is not going. So what is going on in their marriage? And why is it such a big deal that I'm on this pain patch and, and uh, Jeff is willing to ride with me because he doesn't care as much. Because in our conversation when this pain patch conversation came about a couple months ago. It wasn't when I first started it that they learned about it. They really got curious about it after like four months of being on this patch. They finally asked about it and I told them and they researched it and they got concerned. And then they were, that's when I think the bias really started like two months ago. Um, because when I partied with them and that embarrassing incident happened and she apologized for, and all it was was just asking consent about stripping down to a certain extent and I just didn't feel comfortable I guess looking at her husband in that way if you were playing strip something it was like strip uh, twister and I got down to the amount of clothes that I was comfortable about being in and we were all down to a certain amount of clothing and it was his Jeff's turn and he was about to take off his boxers and, I was, and she was like well, he's like, he asked her, and he's like, is it okay? As I, and she's like, well, we got to ask Jenna, are you comfortable with that? And I, I paused too long, and I was just like, I, was, I didn't know how to respond, and I was just like, uh, uh, she's like, I take that as a no. So, no. So, it was just... <laughs> She was embarrassed about that. She said, sorry if things got uh, uncomfortable last night. And I was just like, no, nah, it was fine. It was whatever. I've been embarrassed about certain situations when I've been on that drug with them. So, whatever. So, that's the extent of that. But now, she's not even going. She's been looking forward to this for so long. Guess what the excuse is? Well, basically what my excuse was going to be if we're not going. Because of my fall on Friday, I told her I may not go, but I still bought the ticket. Like, this was before I was decisive about going. And I'm like, no, I'm going to force myself to go. I'm going to go no matter what, you know. I'm sure my pain will be fine by then. I'm getting trigger points on Monday, so it'll be a lot better by the following weekend anyway, so. I'll be fine to go. And if I uh, get in pain, I'm going to come home late. You know, that's just all it is. But I'm going to go have a good time. And that brought me to the conversation this morning of uh, with the guy. He's like, do you ever get unwound? Do you ever, like, enjoy, just enjoy the moment? I see how wound up you are. Uh, and uh, he 
and just ask me if I can ever get out of my head enough to do that. And I'm like, yeah, I can. But some days are harder than others. But he sees my beautiful still. So he just wants to see me do better. Because I told, you know, I told him a couple of my faults. And he's like, well, I'd just like to see you do better. And I had a couple excuses. And I'm like, I'm throwing excuses out. I realize that. <laughs> I'm being defensive. <laughs> he's like, yeah, and you see that too, don't you? I'm like, I do. But I go... I try. He's like, try harder. I'm like, thank you for the truth. He said, why would I have lie to you? This is the other patient I was talking with for an hour this morning. He's like, why would I lie to you? I'm like, he's like, because there's nothing to gain. I'm not in it for anything. I'm like, okay. So it, it makes me think, it really made me reflect and think about this friendship. And then the text message this morning that she's not going now. Are you serious? Are you serial after all of this? You're not going to go? And it's because of... She's having lower back pain and uh, SI joint with connective tissue. Or connective tissue issues. I'm like, huh? <laughs> I'm sorry to be laughing. I... I, I uh, I'm laughing out of uncomfortableness because it's like, really? I have a connective tissue disease and I have SI joint problems. And this is the same reason I was telling you that I wasn't going to go. And now you're using the same excuse. And she said it happened, the first time happened when she was pregnant. And it sucks. <laughs> I had to laugh so hard because I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? I hurt my SI joint. And my connective tissue is damaged. It's such a BS excuse. That's an excuse. There's no way. I asked her what she did to hurt herself. And she said nothing. She said she felt this during her pregnancy. And it sucks. <laughs> really? When I told her I fell, she's like, oh. And I said I got my trigger point injection and stuff. And she's like... Oh, you should feel better by then. And this was the same, only three days difference. So she did nothing to hurt her SRI joint. She didn't fall or anything. But yet somebody that has connective tissue issues and pain, chronic pain. But she is definitely not a person that would ever, if she really had that issue... I asked her what she's doing for a treatment plan and she kind of answered and the text happened when I was making this video so I haven't read her uh, response to that yet. Um, but I think I saw when it popped up on the screen I read the brief little blurb that I could see before it disappeared behind the camera because this app's open. Um, I think that it's just a BS excuse. She's blowing wind up my ass. But I can't believe her. I just, I can't, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm processing this still. I just, I don't understand. Like, I feel like it's a huge slap in the face, this answer. Really? You think I'm going to be better after I fall with all these, these kind of problems that you're complaining about now, if it's, tr if it's true. I, I can't say one or another. I'm not in her body, but if it's true... She should be feeling better by then because she's not a person that has these kind of issues that I've got. Unless she really does. But she's not willing to accept it or admit it. And she's not willing to go on this kind of medication for it. 100% no. No, she would rather suffer. And so she would rather bail out on her friend and her husband because she can't control the situation and because her husband don't want to spend the money for the Uber and so now, what's going on with our marriage? It's not just a her and me thing. It's, there's something going on. And it's just, she cancels all the time. We have planned to meet up so many times and she's canceled every single time. Was to meet up at a store to go shopping for her outfit together or whatever. She cancels every time. We never shop together. We did one time. We will one time. So...
anyways, that's my story. Everybody just be kind to each other. Love each other. Don't, don't be one of those people like my friend Susan. It's, it's not cool. Like, I see what's happening. And uh, she's just trying to sabotage our friendship for her own selfish um, lack of being able to control everything. So if she can't control it, she just won't do it. If I'm ever slightly hesitant about anything, she changes her mind like that. If I say I'm going to think about it, like I said, it, I never prompt her for anything. She just gives me the info. The truth will always reveal itself. Peace out, guys.